Hi, welcome to another trick of the week. In this one, we're going to be looking at the right hand technique of the great Cliff Ukulele Ike Edwards. Now I'm a huge fan of Cliff Edwards. He was an amazing performer, hugely famous, hugely prolific with radio shows and TV shows and film appearances. And he recorded an awful lot of great records featuring him, his amazing voice and his ukulele. Now I always think if you are drawn to a particular player or a particular player's style, something about that sound that attracts you, it's really worth seeking out that particular player. And now, of course, thanks to the internet and YouTube, we can often watch films of those players and see exactly how they did what they did. There's a lot of footage of Cliff Edwards about, and I've watched quite a few to try and get an idea of what's going on with his right hand. And it's an absolute masterclass in minimalist, efficient and effective rhythm playing. First of all, he played without a strap. I've got this quite high to keep it in shot, but he'd often have it, you know, with his elbow more, more or less at 90 degrees. So quite low. Often when people play without a strap, they tend to have it right up under their chin. But he would have it quite low down here. Quite relaxed way of playing. I'll lift it up so we're a little bit more in shot. His thumb got involved now and again, sometimes just playing a single note before a strum, but most of the time he was playing with his index finger. And not just doing what we often do on the uke, which is sticking out our index finger and strumming like this, often quite far away from the strings in terms of how far up and how far down we go, but even if you're just strumming from the wrist, you still have got this big arc of movement. He didn't tend to do that. He used much more of his finger itself and a little bit of wrist movement to get his rhythm, like this. And you see, I'm actually strumming with my finger. I'm not just letting my wrist do the work and my finger get pushed out of the way. I am extending my finger to get that strum. My thumb largely is resting, though not fixed, but somewhere around here. And he would sometimes come into contact with the body with his thumb and sometimes rest it on the edge of the fingerboard. And I think some of that is partly when he was performing, he wasn't wanting to look down. So that's a nice little point of reference, but also those little brief bits of contact with the thumb do help support the uke. So the first thing to do is to get your index finger, rest gently, just touching the uke somewhere around here where the body and neck join and then just loosely let your fingers fall down. But strum with your index finger pushing down. Now try not to get tied to having your thumb fixed firmly here. You can lift it off, he frequently did, as your wrist helps with the strum. But most of the work is coming from your finger. It's wonderfully efficient. And it gives you that solid downbeat that you need for playing sort of swingy jazz tunes. The kind of... The island strum, whilst it works for lots of sorts of music, is not so good for these nice swingy tunes. We need four solid beats on the beat to give us that nice swing sound. So that's all coming from the index finger. However, he had another little trick that he used to use very frequently, and that is a rasguedo. If you are a classical musician, a classical guitarist in particular, you will have learned this technique. It's this. So what I'm doing there is I'm strumming down with each finger, one after the other, but not four separate strums. As one starts, once it's hit a couple of strings, the next one comes. And really all I'm doing is opening out my hand like that. Some people prefer to start with their little finger. I feel I can get a more consistent sound starting with my index finger. The thing is, because you're already using that index fingers to strum, it's not that difficult to bring these other fingers up, do your regular index finger strum and follow it with the rest of the fingers coming out one at a time. So you get this.
It's a lovely effect. It helps accentuate chord changes and just add a little bit of variety to the rhythm. And if you really want to make that chord change pop out, rather than thinking about in our regular strum, we might think about strumming harder at that point. With this, we can just add this nice little accent. Like that. It's really effective. It's really compact and efficient. So it's well worth experimenting with in your own playing, particularly on those jazzier tunes. So before I go, I'll do a nice little close-up of my hand so that you can see exactly what's going on. I hope you've enjoyed this one and I'll see you again soon. Bye.